Freestyle Capital has raised a third fund of $60 million and brought on a brand new partner, making their group now a total of three. And we're here today in the studio with the excellent Josh and the brand new Jenny. Welcome, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us. How's I'd like to say we're four with Molly, so. Three partners, four total. So your right, firm right, right. is actually now half women. We are. We are. Very yes. good. Is that a higher ratio than most firms? <laughs> that was rhetorical. That's a leading question. Don't, but don't answer that. Don't answer that. Answer is yes. But your last fund was 40 yeah. million, and that was 2013. So two years later, right. you're up to 57 million. That's right. So why not 60? Like, why would you go with 57? It's why not a random number. A damn good point. Why not? Why not 100? Why not 200? How did right. this number come to be? Why'd you pick it? Well, you know, if anyone, if we're, if we're being honest, was most VCs. Aren't not. about these numbers, <laughs> uh, maybe not show. generally. Yeah. Is that that was kind of the amount that seemed to make sense for us and our LPs, and so we kind of rallied around that number. It also lets us invest in about 14 companies a year at the right kind of the amount we were used to investing, we're comfortable investing at. But with you on board, you'll be investing more total companies per right. year, right? So what would your right. pace be? So I'll probably have a similar pace as these guys, I imagine. We haven't set numbers, okay. but I don't think anything will be different. Maybe more. Maybe, maybe more. more. Maybe it's you'll be of, like the most <laughs> prolific person at Freestyle. <laughs> yes. I would be so happy if that were happening. <laughs> as long That'd as they're awesome. good investments, right? right? We only invest in you know five, four or five companies a year per partner. Mm -hmm. So it's that's you know, it's a pretty low number per. Person. Well, you only have so much capital. No offense. Right. We had a conversation that it, we had a lot of interest, and it could have been more. Right. And we had to have a conversation about do we want to go sort of bigger is bigger right. better, and we decided right. no. I mean, Fred and Wilson so, said the same thing recently, actually, right. from USV. He's like, we want yeah. to have in smaller funds. We can do better work with that. Right. But I know these two pretty well, because they do disrupt, they judge, but I don't know your investing profile or kind of what you want to deploy capital into. So for entrepreneurs out there that are watching this, yeah. they want to come to you, what are you going to be working on with them? So I don't have any specific thesis, but I want to work with great I'm going to speak cliche for a moment. Please, great, for great entrepreneurs building really big, valuable companies. Doing disruption, so, perhaps? Yeah, Bam. disruption. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a little marketplace, peer go. to peer. What else can we? <laughs> it's, it's a big data Hadoop, Uber on demand, Instacart. That's it. That's my theory. Billion dollar deal. Yeah. Um, but I, but so I uh, invest in a range of things. It, it has to be things that I understand. So my first uh, investment was SaaS. It was B two B, but it was in an area that I completely understood the need for. Knew I could add a lot of value with my retail connections. Mm -hmm. So that made sense. So it has to be something that either. I, basically, I feel like I have to be able to add value. Right. But you guys have a lot of money now, and it's a really yeah. interesting time in the market because we're seeing a lot of super seed rounds, we've seen a lot of larger Series A rounds. We're talking about a Series A crunch, well, we're also talking about there being too much Series A money. Um, everyone's raised big funds, and things are expensive. I mean, YZ Demo Day was like, even worse than usual this year. Um, and I'm just really curious, you know, are you guys seeing prices go up? Are you comfortable paying more for what you may have paid less for last year? What does it feel like out there? So our, our, our average valuation stays the same. I mean, pre-money is still five and a half. It's been that way for, you know, almost since we started. So for us, we're, we're, we're not seeing any changes on the seed, at the seed stage. I think at the Series A stage, it's, it's harder to raise capital because there are more companies raising money and the Series A kind of capital is about the same as it was a few years ago. So we're seeing just more seed and same Series A, so the funnel gets right. Str That's right. more constricted. Okay. Which, which opened up a door for us with our, with our fund. One of the reasons we raised more is not just because Jenny's here, but we, we want to do more seed prime, which is the round in between the A and the seed that allows companies to raise money if they're not kind of ready for an A yet. Maybe they haven't shown enough revenue or enough traction. So, so what's the difference between a seed prime and an A? For people who don't know, what, what's this gap right. you're trying to fill? So from a valuation perspective, it's kind of in between. You look at the midpoint between what you think an A would, would generate. What's an average A pre right now? Pre money A average like what, 13, 14? 15. 15? Okay. Yeah. And yeah. this would be more like a 10. 15 to 17. It'd be more like 10 to 12. Okay. Um, and, and it's for companies who are showing progress but haven't actually hit on some of the metrics that you need for an A today. Maybe, our, maybe our, their run rate for revenue is below a million. And maybe they're, so it, it's. Corporate adolescence, if you will. Right. That <laughs> awkward stage when you can't quite walk. Pubescent. Pubescent. Whoa, right. that's right. punitive Pubescent. even. Right. Right, this is a terrible game. Stop playing this game. <laughs> um, but but your so prices right. haven't gone up though. But I hear right. from nearly everyone else that things are just so expensive right now, they can't even find deals that they like because things are just too costly. Well, I, you know, so we have different philosophies at, at Freestyle, which is, which, is, which is fine. I haven't been to a demo day in, I don't know, a year and a half because I actually don't work well in that environment. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, if I'm going to pay up, I don't want to be pressured to pay up in a week. Right. If I'm going to pay up, I'm, it's because I spent more time with the company and be gotten to know them better and I feel, I feel that potential more. 
but typically my experience with my experience with YC is I've got to rush and I've got to pay up and that doesn't work well for me. No. So you don't like to be pressured into a deal. Surprising. I would never have guessed that. <laughs> it's a marriage. I want it's, time it's, to get it's to a, know it's you. It's a marriage. That's fair. And I have spent more time out of the valley than I think Josh and Dave have. Two out of my three investments are New York based and oh. so I like LA, I like New York. Someone just was talking to me about Cincinnati, and I, I'm all ears. <laughs> I, 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 I was with you till Cincinnati. So will you be working <laughs> to deploy capital then more across the country and not just here? I'm looking to deploy capital where I fall in love with the entrepreneur and okay. the idea, and I think I'm more open in putting more effort into areas outside of the valley because of valuation. So give me your top four places outside the valley you're going to be looking to put capital in in this fund. I would say L.A. and New York are going to be the two obvious ones. And then two more. Like Chicago two. or Austin? I don't, or I don't, I'd be, if I, if I answered that, I'd be lying, so. That's fine. <laughs> Lie? Okay. You know, then like, Austin and say, Chicago. You know, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> I mean, I would say we also are looking at Boston. We like Boston. We've had some success there. And, and uh, Waterloo. I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff in right. Waterloo. And believe it or not, I've looked, in the last six months, I've talked to five companies from Halifax. I couldn't find no Halifax discussion. on a map with the GPS. It, by, uh, actually, by the way, where, where, is that in Canada? It's where you want to go when the apocalypse happens. Yeah. Actually, beautiful segue. So the bubble <laughs> and the coming correction. Um, you guys are, are raising at a really high point in both mm -hmm. public and private markets. Do you have any worries or like, you know, 18 to 24 month fears about a stern correction in the NASDAQ or the private markets that could lead to a, a real reduction in valuations for private companies? Well, I would say a big change for us, and maybe it reflects that, maybe it's, it's our maturation, is that we actually don't invest in, uh, out of our, you know, the larger check in, in those kind of binary social mobile you know, companies. We think that they're much harder for us to read. Our crystal balls aren't as good came up sounding kind of odd. Yeah. A crystal ball. A crystal ball. And I was right. too slow to right. get that. Right. Okay, right. yeah. Our, uh, the crew just descended upon the room. I mean, so Dave's your partner and you have a crystal ball. Right. Okay. <laughs> I think we can wrap up. Well, well, right. Moving on. Late night. Back to the late night show. Late we'll night save show. it for late night show. All right. um, and so our crystal ball is too murky to kind of see that. So we actually have a, we call it our moonshot fund. It's part of our regular fund. We put 100K. We would put up, we'll invest 100K in situations where totally binary, we like the entrepreneurs, like the idea, right. we can't get our arms out how big it's gonna be, and we know it's either big or it's gonna fail miserably, and so. Is this we, like when you're drunk in Vegas and you're playing like right. roulette and you're like, yeah, all on 27. Right, Okay. Right. I, I've like, been there. All on 57, this. but kind of like that. Yeah. Not 57, 27, right. we're, right. we passed 57, then right, it's right, now right. behind <laughs> us. But so no, no major fears about macro changes for you guys? Well, I think, again, what we've changed is we actually are gonna probably do two thirds B2B, um, in this fund, we think that that's a, an exciting place for us to play. It's, it's an area we're getting to know better and better. Versus like uh, maybe in every fund prior, we've moved more towards B2B. In the first fund, we were probably 60, 40, you know, B2C, B2B, and that's just shifting over time, and I bet we'll be, you know, the reverse. Okay, so, well, but I soon. will say that I have nerves about the, the market and capital being that I lived on Sand Hill in 2008 when the markets dried up. And so when I look at my portfolio companies, I mean, I'll say to them, times are good right now. Like if you can get it now, go get it now because you don't know if it's gonna disappear. Right. So I don't think we're investing differently and I think, or we're, I would completely agree with what Josh said, but in terms of how we talk to our portfolio companies, I think we've seen this movie before and we're all aware that it may change and therefore for them, they should get it while they can. So winter. Eh, maybe. Anyways, <laughs> it's fall. Well, fall. Fine. Right. Thank right. you for coming in. Good luck. And in All a right. year, we'll do this again and see how your IRR has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks. Thank you.